And uh, this, of course, focusing on what's happening in the Northwest Province, where suspended ANC members, uh, who are also members of the provincial legislature, uh, say that Rule 25.43 of the ANC Constitution, adopted in 2017 during the ANC's 54th National Conference, allows them to remain members of the party pending the outcome of their appeal. Now, the Interim Provincial Committee, or the IPC, decided to suspend four members and the Premier, uh, Professor Job Mohoro, for disregarding the position of the party during the election of the Chair of Chairs last Friday. The IPC, which uh, will also regulate and uh, supervise activities of the suspended members, um, made that decision. And this has highlighted once again the ANC's internal tensions and uh, the paralysis that this has brought to service delivery and hindering the restoration of governance uh, contrary to what was agreed upon when the province was placed under administration. And that was back in 2018. Now, Dr. Oshupeng Maseng, who is a, a, political, uh, a political science and international relations lecturer at the Northwest University, joins us to discuss these latest developments in the Northwest province. Um, thanks for your time, Dr. Good morning. Good morning to you and your viewers. Now, Dr. Maseng, it appears that uh, the ANC in the province is and perhaps not even just an appearance. We know that it is fraught with divisions. And other ANC internal structures have come out to sympathize with the suspended members. Uh, the ANC Women's League, for example, say that this is frivolous. And then there's a branch statement that's accusing the IPC of wanting to remove anyone who they believe is not in their faction. And then, of course, the suspended members themselves uh, disregarded the party's position. Now. What do you make of all of this? And, and, and that disregard for the party position, how serious a breach is that? Uh, I, I, I don't think uh, there's anything wrong for members of the provincial legislature to disregard the decision by the IPC. What we must actually put into question here is that uh, members of the provincial legislature, including uh, the premier himself, are actually uh, uh, also members of, of the interim uh, uh, committee. Now, it, it comes with a surprise whereby you have the premier who's ex officio of this uh, interim committee claiming that uh, he did not know anything about his suspension. Now, clearly, there's a possibility that this meeting of the IPC did not even sit where in which decisions were taken regarding how the organization itself should run its in, in, in government. But, the, the reality is that when you do not have a, a provincial structure that was actually elected in Congress, it brings a lot of instability because this would be an interim structure which uh, some members of the ANC would consistently disregard their, their decisions based on the fact that they were not elected by Congress but were an interim structure that was supposed to take the province to the Congress itself. And as, as we are sitting now currently, there have been consistent complaints across various structures of the ANC that this IPC is actually ineffective in terms of the mandate it was given. So I, I don't blame the premier and the members of the provincial legislature for disregarding uh, 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 such a decision because they are supposed to have been part of this decision as they also sit within this current uh, interim committee. So what does that say? You know, where is this IPC at? Because uh, from your explanation, if there's an IPC meeting happening and some members of the IPC, including a senior member such as the Premier of the province, not being part of that, even though he is uh, part, supposed to be part of that structure. What does that mean? What is actually going on here? No, this, this clearly shows you that there's, there's a breakdown of communication and possibilities that some or, or those that are actually conveners and coordinators of the IPC do not necessarily understand the organizational process of the ANC because if they indeed understood the organizational process of the ANC, they shouldn't have actually excluded these members of the IPC in, 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 in the meetings that actually took decisions to elect chair of chairs and actually took decisions to suspend them. Because there's no way that you can be an ex officio member of a certain committee, then you hear of decisions that are taken by such a committee or, uh, via the media. It, is, it does not make sense at all because you should have been part of these decisions at, at the same time. But I think the bone of contention here is that uh, we, we, we must be able to 
uh, it clearly indicates the thin line between party politics as well as cabinet and legislature politics. Look, even if members of the provincial legislature are deployed by the ANC, the reality is that they also have an obligation to represent not only the interest of the ANC, but uh, uh, represent the interest of uh, 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 the population of the province as well. Now, it, 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 it therefore says that they have an obligation to actually take decisions that they deem within their interest uh, that would represent not only the ANC, but also the citizens, citizens of, of the province. Now, uh, such, such, such fights that you see, such fights that you see came as a result of uh, the, upper, the IPC apparently having nominated someone else to be chair of chess, and yet having uh, certain members of the ANC who are members of the provincial legislature actually voting with the opposition, which is a democratic alliance in this instance, to actually nominate their own preferred candidate. So it, it's actually another battle of who should occupy leadership positions within uh, 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 the provincial legislature itself. So it begs the question, who is running the province? Uh, who is the IPC? And also, why is Lutuli House quiet about this? You see, uh, w when you speak of, of ANC politics, the reality would be that uh, Lituli House now would have to have a meeting on, 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 on a weekly basis where you have the top six uh, officials actually meeting on certain issues that are with regards to how the ANC is ran. Now, perhaps, perhaps we should actually await the outcome of the two laws on, on the, the, the meeting of the uh, top six officials on what is their perception and what is their position with regards to this. Until such time that the two houses declared, I think the province now will be standing in limbo in terms of where to move from now. Uh, do you think, Ma, uh, Dr. Masang, that this is a precursor towards removing Job Mohoro as Premier of the province? You see, the, the reality about removing the Premier is that even if the IPC can sit and take a stand decision that we are going to remove the Premier. It will be upon the Premier's prerogative that whether the Premier will decide to resign, and at the same time, it will be the prerogative of members of the provincial legislature whether they decide to pass a motion of no confidence on the Premier. But seeing as it is now, because the Premier is alleged to have voted with these members of the provincial legislature for their preferred candidate to be chair of chess. So it clearly shows you that those that are members of the provincial legislature are actually in cahoots with the Premier and agree with him in terms of everything. So there is no way in which the Premier can resign uh, if, if, uh, 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 even if the IPC wish to, because it will be a, a personal decision. The ANC does not have any power whatsoever in terms of the South African legislative framework to can actually forcefully remove somebody in, in structures of government. If you remember quite well, we have had such instances most recently whereby the IPC itself took a decision to remove certain Troika members, that would be your uh, speakers and, and, and municipal mayors. But these municipal mayors and speakers are still actually sitting in those positions and actually executing their duties as normal. They refuse to actually toe the line of the IPC. So it clearly shows that there are a lot of decisions that are taken by the IPC that are consistently being disregarded by those that are deployed by the ANC in provincial government as well as local government. And beyond ANC internal politics, I mean, the question is about service delivery. It's about how all of this is affecting the people of the Northwest province. The IPC and very boldly stating that the work of government will actually take place under its supervision. Uh, but following Mohoro's briefing, if you look at it um, uh, by the uh, chairpersons of the legislature last week, you know, um, he was actually saying that he's embarrassed over, over the poor track record of service delivery in that province and also the rampant fraud and corruption um, of the provincial and local government uh, spheres in that particular province. So what has the impact been uh, since he has taken over um, since May? You know, I, I don't think there's been any change, really. Uh, I, I, I remember having an, a, a media interview when Job Mokoro initially became premier and when he, when he replaced uh, uh, the former premier, Supramo Mabulat. I, I did not think that he was to be a solution to, to the, the, the service delivery challenges in the province. I think what needs to be done for the Northwest is that there is a need to have a properly elected provincial executive committee of the ANC 
we should have some sense of stability uh, uh, that will have also an impact in how things are run in government. Until such time that you do not have a center that is able to hold and actually control those that are deployed, we'll consistently see infightings and there will be not clear-cut service delivery promises by the ANC to the people because as we are speaking now, when you do not have a provincial structure that are elected, remember those that are in power and those that are in the interim would also have an essence of uh, self-preservation where they also want to see themselves being elected as uh, the provincial executive come time for the conference. Now, since well we do not have that sitting and permanent structure, you are going to consistently experience in fights between members or leadership of the ANC. And ultimately, this will have an impact that is extremely negative on service delivery. And hence, you do not even see any progress or change with, with respect to service delivery in the province. Uh, Dr. Masing, I just want to ask you to please um, stay with us. You know, we have to wrap this, unfortunately, on SABC2. But I just have a few more questions that I'd like to put to you uh, regarding uh, the province being under administration. And yet we're still seeing, um, you know, the, the, the fraud and uh, corruption continuing, some would say unabated even at this stage. So I just want to talk to that and also uh, what the Premier tried to do and that was blocked. Uh, all of that um, I'll speak to you about after the news at 8. But if you will just please hold on for us. At this point, we unfortunately have to say goodbye to our SABC2 viewers. Uh, thank you so much for being with us this morning. We'll see you again tomorrow. Yeah, certainly. Have a wonderful day and uh, stay warm wherever you are, except in Cape Town. Stay cool. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>